Welcome everyone. We're going to be talking about occupational therapy activities that you can do when you're at home with your child and we're away from school. These activities are going to be a wide range of activities with materials that you should have readily available around your home without a need to go out and purchase any items. Even though school is not in session within the building, we are all still working to support your families while you're home with your child. We're going to be discussing a variety of fine motor, visual motor, fun perceptual activities that you can do with your child on a daily basis. These activities should take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Um, the recommendation is not that you do all of these activities, but to simply choose one or two activities each day that you can engage with your child while doing. Um, please be aware that some of the materials recommended are small items that could be swallowed or, or put into um, your child's mouth. So please make sure to supervise your child during all of these activities. We do have two of us that are um, working and ready to serve you um, during this time that we're away from our schools. Um, my name again is Patty McDonald and Paul McDonald is the occupational therapy assistant. We are both here to support your family, answer questions and help in whatever way we can. Um, although the number listed on your screen is our office number. I would also like to offer you my cell phone number. Um, that number is 760-455-9796. And we are going to be having office hours from 9 to 12 every Tuesday. Please feel free to call in at that time with any questions you may have for us. So the first activity we're gonna talk about um, is just a fun activity that you can do with your child, creating kind of like a necklace. So you'd be using um, a pasta, some type of string, whether it's a shoelace or, or a string that you would wrap gifts with, um, and, and the basis behind a lot of these activities is to work on underlying skills that will help your child with activities related to school, such as writing, using scissors, or even self-care activities such as buttoning your, um, their, their button on their pants. Um, this activity is a good activity because it requires the use of two hands working together. That's called bilateral integration. So a simple activity such as making a necklace is a good activity because you're requiring both hands together. I really like this activity. It works on crossing midline. So if you were to draw a line down the middle of your body, dividing your left side from your right side, that's your midline. It's really important for children to participate in activities that require them to cross midline. That's an indication that both sides of their body, both sides of their brain is working. So by having your child sit on a piece of paper or outside in your driveway, and draw a rainbow from one side of their body to the next, you would be working on a basic skill that's required for activities such as writing and reading.
This activity is a great activity to do with students of any age. It's working on sensory exploration. So by providing your child with various materials such as beans, rice, sand, pasta, you're allowing them the opportunity to feel various uh, mediums while searching for small items that would be buried inside of that material. So you can apply academics to this activity by burying little letters, you know, if you by chance have magnetic letters that you would typically put on your refrigerator, you can hide them in the sand and ask them to find an item and then identify what the letter is that they found. You can do this with colors by finding an item and telling you the, the color of the item. But basically, this is a fun way to engage your child in various sensory exploration activities. This activity works on skills that would be needed to hold a pencil correctly. So by using tongs or tweezers that you might have around your house, you can have your child pick up a variety of small items, such as pom-poms, cotton balls, food items such as grapes or raisins or M&Ms, have them pick up the item using the tong and place it into another activity, into another item such as a bottle or a jar or even just off to the side. Um, please ensure that while your child is using the tongs or the tweezers that they are using their thumb with their first two or three fingers to open and close the tongs. This type of activity works on finger dexterity, which is needed in order to manipulate a pencil. This activity is good, especially for children who are working on pre-writing activities um, by using popsicle sticks or even Q-tips. You can encourage your child to form various shapes and then identify those shapes or to form certain uppercase letters, such as the letter H or L, T or Z or M. You could ask your child to create the letter for you and then identify the name of that letter. Or again, you could simply stick with various shapes and have your child build the shape and then identify that for you. So this is an activity that any child would like, especially where we might be cooped up in our house a little bit more than normal. Um, you can build an obstacle course with basic items and furniture around your house. Um, this is a great activity um, to work on body in space. So where your child's body is relative to the furniture item. This is especially helpful for children that might be described as clumsy or a child that you know, falls or trips often or bumps into items. Um, by having your child go under chairs or under the dining room table, you're actually working on their position in space while having um, fun within your house. Um, when, the, when your child is asked to walk on the couch cushions, they're working on balance and 
you know, I know you might not have a tunnel in your house, but you can create the same effect with blankets or have your child again go under your dining room table. So tactile play, um, similar to using the, the sand bins, this just allows your child to feel, to actually feel what it is they're making. Um, and of course, Play-Doh would probably be the simplest medium to use in this, in this activity. Um, have your child roll the Play-Doh out and then form letters or shapes and then identify the letters or shapes that they are forming. Have your child um, use a big ball of Play-Doh and hide a coin in there, and they have to dig through the Play-Doh, find the coin and identify the coin that you've hidden in there for them. Um, so your child is learning, but actually having fun while they're doing it. Um, and it also gives them um, uh, the, the tactile sense so that they're also feeling what it is that they're learning. Q-tip painting. So most of us probably have Q-tips in our home or cotton balls. And again, you can just print off pictures or use a coloring book if you have a coloring book and just allow your child to have fun um, painting and creating, um, but also focusing on the way they're holding the Q-tip or the cotton ball. Um, if your child is one that has difficulty correctly holding a pencil, Using the cotton ball is going to be a good option because they'll need to use their thumb and fingers in order to hold the cotton ball versus using their entire hand, which would be called a mass grasp. This is an activity that's going to help facilitate a better pencil grip for your child. So just a variety of gross motor activities. Again, similar to the obstacle course, um, it's really important that your child um, have opportunity every day to participate in some type of gross motor activity. Um, wheelbarrow walking is, the picture shows where you're holding your child's feet and they're using their arms to walk a certain distance. You can encourage them to walk across the living room to a particular toy or stuffed animal. Um, if your child is not able to assume this type of position, and if you have a yoga ball in your home, you can have your child lay their belly over the yoga ball while participating in this type of activity um, by adding um, the challenge of completing a puzzle while in this position. Um, it requires them to use their upper body, their shoulder strength to um, bear weight, which is a very good activity um, for them when it comes time to using their hands, they need the upper body strength. So this is an activity that would provide that opportunity, um, which would then lead to better fine motor skills. It's really important for your child to have time on the floor, even if they're older. Um, having your child lay on their stomach while propping themselves up on their arms also helps with weight bearing through their upper body. Um, this is a milestone that young children learn and go through, um, which eventually leads up to crawling. So again, we can use this time at home with our child to get back to some of the core skills that they might have done when they were younger. And again, they don't always have to be sitting at a desk or table in order to do activities that will benefit them with their writing activities when they do get back to school. Building with blocks, something that um, Many children have done. Um, it's something that you could perhaps revisit during this time at home with them. 
you could um, create a design of some sort and ask your child to replicate that design, such as a small pyramid. You could ask your child to build a tower with the blocks to see how high they can get their tower. And this activity is very good for finger precision and also a word called proprioception, which is knowing how much force is needed in order to build the tower. So by playing a simple game of blocks, you're actually working on a lot of underlying skills with your child. And of course, when possible, get your child outside to play. Um, a lot of children are overscheduled. They're in school, they're in ABA, they're in sports, they're taking music lessons, and this is a good time to just allow your child to be a child. Um, use chalk out on the sidewalk, have them you know, go on a treasure hunt, collecting rocks or leaves, and just give your child the opportunity to be outdoors playing um, especially since they're not having as much opportunity for movement while not in class. And the picture on your screen is an example of a proper pencil grip. So um, when possible, encourage your child to hold a pencil or any type of writing utensil, such as a crayon or a marker. Ask your child to hold the pencil with their thumb, their index finger, and their middle finger. That is the pencil grip we're striving for. Um, that doesn't mean there are other ways that a child can properly hold their pencil, but this is a, um, a, a pencil grip that would be considered optimal. And with regards to writing, if your child is at a point where they are writing, um, whether it's letters, words, sentences, this is a good example of paper that can be purchased. However, you don't need to purchase it. Um, you can create it by just highlighting the bottom half um, of, of the paper. And what this does, it gives your child a visual cue of where to place each letter relative to the line. So for example, um, all the lowercase letters are listed there for you. Lowercase letter A, C, E, etc. All those letters would be placed in the yellow line. So as you're instructing your child, you would encourage them to make the letter the lowercase letter a sit inside the yellow space. So it just gives them a visual cue to make it a little bit easier um, to know where to place their letters. The other thing you can do with your child while writing is to teach them to use an external prompt such as a paper clip or a popsicle stick and that would be used to space out their words. So they would write a word, then lay the popsicle stick down as a space, then write the next word and continue um, until they finish their sentence. If your child is one who writes quickly, this will also help to slow down the rate of your child's writing. And thank you for taking the time to listen to this recording. Again, we are here to assist your family during this time. Please feel free to call us during our office hours, which are open from nine to 12 on Tuesdays. And again, the best number to dial would be 760-455 nine seven nine six and on behalf of the occupational therapy department we encourage you to reach out to us with any questions you may have thank you